Welcome back to the Spectre Creative Channel. That's me. I mean, that actually is me. Well, it's a picture of me from a few years ago. Maybe my hair's gotten a little more gray, and I don't really wear glasses that much anymore. But I'm Scott Knightlick, and I have been making toys for a long time. And sometimes I get to make really amazing toys with brands I love, like Star Wars. Because of all the toys that I personally collect as a collector, Star Wars is kind of number one. And I have Star Wars figures kind of all over the place in my office. They range from, you know, personal sort of subsets, like Cantina, or in this case, Rebel Pilots, as well as just collections of kind of some of my personal favorite toys that are on different shelves. The point is, I'm a big Star Wars fan. If you've been following this channel, you know I've made videos about the whole history of the modern Star Wars line, starting with the very first wave of Power of the Force 2. Most of my figures wind up in little bins like this because I just don't have room to display the hundreds and hundreds we've had. But going back to Power of the Force 2, one of my favorite things that was offered in that line were the cinema scenes. These were packs of three figures that came with a base and usually a cardboard backdrop that could be cut out of the back of the package and would be great as a display piece because that's pretty much what collectors do. And one of my absolute favorite cinema scenes in this whole line in the Power of the Force 2 line was the final Jedi duel. Notice that duel is copyrighted and not Jedi, because, you know, you can copyright the word duel. Anyway, the reason that I like this pack so much is, part, well, mostly because it had an Emperor Palpatine, who is one of my absolute favorite characters in Star Wars, since Return of the Jedi was the movie I was sort of most aware of as a kid, since I was born in 78. I mean, I knew Star Wars and Empire, but, you know, I was there for Jedi seeing it in the theaters when it premiered, and I remember seeing it in the newspaper. And this pack had Palpatine in his chair, which is where he spent most of his time. And the figure of Palpatine that came in the set was removable from the chair, but he was kind of in permanent chair sitting pose, which is a little odd, but since we had so many other Palpatine figures, having one that sat in his chair was pretty cool. In fact, I liked it so much, it's the only Star Wars figure in my entire collection I modified. I cut it out of the base, because it was permanently attached to it, I painted the uh, bottom black, or at least, you know, around the outer rim so it wouldn't have the cut marks, so that I could permanently display Palpatine in his chair wherever I wanted. And he's kind of followed me all over. He's come with me to college. He's been displayed in my room when I lived in, you know, as a bachelor, when I got married. Well, actually, when I got married, it kind of went into my office, so my wife didn't have to stare at it. But the point is, it's always sort of traveled with me. And I was always waiting, assuming there would be another Emperor Palpatine in his throne that would come out sooner than later. And after we got Palpatine after Palpatine after Palpatine after Emperor, or Darth Sidious or whatever, you know, they called him at the time, it was still the same character, we just always got him in standing pose. And we never got him sitting, where he spends a lot of I mean, time. We got him in the Black Series sitting in a chair, even recently, but still no 3 and 3 fourth update to him in his chair. And the chair was permanently stuck to the base, and unless you were crazy like me and literally cut it out with pliers. Well, lo and behold, a few months back, it was revealed he was coming. And I don't usually keep my figures in package. There are a few in my entire collection. I'm not just talking Star Wars figures. I'm talking everything that I collect, whether I worked on it or it's something I bought at a convention or whatever. But a few things really do blow my mind, and I keep them in package. And I have to tell you, I was not expecting this figure to be so good and the package to be so great. And I know that, well partially because I've worked in the industry, and from all the time I spent sitting next to the president of UPS, that gave me the insight to know when a packaging really goes above and beyond. So, talking about this figure and leading up to the review here, it was obviously meant as a Comic-Con exclusive or Comic-Con premiere, but with Comic-Con no longer with us, or at the moment put on hiatus, Hascon came along offering us great items that were meant for Comic-Con, like this X-Men set, which I had to pick up because I love X-Men, I love Victorian-era stuff, and what can I say, I have a hot thing for, you know, Jean Grey. All right, so, now it was announced Palpatine was coming to Hascon, meant to be San Diego Comic-Con, but it didn't matter, it was coming, and I could get it, and I didn't care how. Now, it was a slight modification of the retail release, Vintage Figure Series number 200, which I actually still have not gotten. It's on order from Amazon. But that's what has Con or, you know, what Hasbro does for San Diego Comic-Con. They usually do sort of a slight modification of a, a uh, retail item because it's expensive to do tooling, and that's how Comic-Con exclusives are usually done, with a head swap or something slightly different. And they showed the figure, and they showed the packaging in what I assumed was a closed box. Well... 
When I got the box in the mail, and I do want to give Hasbro props for a really well done job shipping, not only did it come to my house in three days from when it was announced that it shipped, but it was very well packed. The box was extra large with lots of, uh, you know, airbag pockets keeping it mint, and it came out perfect, perfect mint condition. And I think I only paid like five or six dollars in shipping, so yeah, way to go, Hasbro. All right, so I pulled out what I assumed was a closed box because that was how it was really shown online, and boy, was I surprised to find out this is anything but. What I thought was a closed box was actually a slipcase, and pulling the slipcase up after cutting the tape, although it was very easy peel for those who don't want to cut it, revealed Palpatine in his throne room in a whole fold-out diorama. I can't believe they didn't actually show this in any of the images for the PR. I guess they knew it would sell out, and it did sell out, so maybe this was meant to be a surprise and delight, which it did. I love getting surprised and delighted. And it folds down, and you get, like, the whole throne room with Palpatine in the middle there, and... Again, I know how much work goes into packages like this. It's not easy to pull stuff like this off. And you take the slipcase off, and, you know, it even has a great bio of him on the side. I, I didn't know his, what his first name was. That was crazy, like, learning that from the product description on the website. Um, but, yeah, it's, you know, the old Kenner logo. It makes it look like it's, you know, part of the vintage series. And everything pulls out so easily. The figure pulls out without damaging the package. It's just one little band that can be actually just stretched to take them out. You don't have to cut it. All of the accessories are in a pull-out drawer, and which you know easily, again, comes in and out. You get the same hands with Lightning that the retail release has, which are the same hands from the previous... Uh, what was it? The, the not the Comtech, the other Comtech 2.0, whatever it was, with uh, the you know the the, the episode uh, what eight? Yeah, that that line when when he came out. So uh, yeah, same hands if you already have that figure and the same uh, stick. But he also has Luke's lightsaber, which the retail release doesn't. But yeah, th this one, this is the Force Link. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. So the same hand, same uh, swappable hands as this guy. And, you know, we all have Luke's lightsaber already, probably, but it's cool to get a Luke lightsaber with Palpatine, since he does hold it in the movie. In fact, I think this is the very first Palpatine figure we've ever gotten that's come with Luke's lightsaber, you know, which is really cool, because I love that line, you know, you want this, don't you? All right, so everything pulls out of the package, not only super easy, barely an inconvenience, but... It comes in and out. You can put it back in and put it all together because everything just flips up. The blister flips up. The chair pops out easily. The backdrop pulls out really easily. There's an inner blister and an outer blister, but they just pop in and out. So if you want to reassemble everything and put it mint in package, you can do that. And again, I can tell you from my years of sitting next to the president of UPS and working in packaging for, for toys, this is really hard to do, like really hard. And they pulled it off. Hasbro did a great job. So A plus, you know, from me as a collector and a professional. So pulling everything out, yeah, it's all in scale. It works perfectly. If you've got other figures, which you probably do, this is likely not your very first Star Wars figure ever. But if it is, hey, it's a great one to start with. And unlike the previous Emperor Palpatine in Throne, this one is totally removable. It's not stuck to a base. It's not stuck to anything. You can move it around. Now, I still think that Force Link Palpatine is the best Palpatine that's been done. But that Palpatine is in standing position, which, you know, that's kind of the three things he does. Stand, sit, and shoot lightning. So, uh... We've had lots. We've had lots of standing Palpatines, you know, going back all the way to the original Return of the Jedi figure, which that actually is my figure from when I was a kid. Notice that the uh, nose is all scuffed up. So of all the Palpatines that have been released over the years, we've only had one previous one in the chair. This is our second one. So while this figure isn't the greatest Palpatine, it's the greatest one in a chair. And that's what he needs to do. He needs to be able to sit. That's why he's got the soft goods. So, you know, if you want standing Palpatine, you got the Force Link one. But for a sitting Palpatine, I'm really, really impressed. You know, this figure has a lot of reused parts, but it gets the job done. It sits in the chair. The soft goods don't hinder him at all. And, you know, you can see him next to the standing Palpatine. The way I like the way the robes, you know, flow over him when they're sculpted. That tends to be why I'm not huge on soft goods. But you really do need soft goods for sitting in chair, unless you're going to pose him permanently and sit in chair pose like the Power of the Force 2 one. So it is a slight retool of the Re uh, not, Re yeah, Revenge of the Sith Darth Sidious figure from the uh, duel in the Senate with, with Yoda. 
and but you can see there are some new parts. The uh, left hand is the exact same. You can see here comparing the two of the figures, but he does have new parts as well, such as the right hand. The right hand is new. So you can see he's like, you know, pointing like, you know, you want this, don't you? I can't, I can't do it. I'm not even going to try anymore, but I love that line. And, you know, obviously has a new head, which is also different from the retail release, because here he's smirking, and in the retail release he's, you know, more laughing like that Sidious figure. You can swap the cowls if you want. They do easily fit over each other's head, but obviously the right cowl looks right on the right Sidious or Palpatine. The rest of the figure is the same. The legs are exactly the same, but, you know, brand new soft goods. But you will notice the upper arms and the mid-arms are different because the Sidious figure had the wizard sleeves and the Palpatine from episode uh, 6 does not. He has flat arm sleeves, if you will, that you know, are flush to his hand. So we do get some new tooling, not you know a fully tooled figure, but it doesn't need to be. It's perfect reuse. All right, but the real gem to me is the chair. You know, you know, Ned leads maybe the guy in the chair, but Palpatine is, you know, he's the he's the emperor in the chair. I mean, come on. And getting a new chair is just, I don't know, to me, I've waited so long for this. I'm so excited to finally get a Palpatine chair. It comes apart in two pieces. You can see that. Uh, it just pops right out of the base. You can pop it together. It's got painted detail and sculpted detail on the controllers on both arms, as well as the little sort of, I think it's like a light over his head. I don't know. Maybe it's for reading. Who knows what he does in this chair? It's like his, you know, universal chair of fun. He even had it in the Senate, which I thought was a cool nod in the prequels. So here he is compared to his old chair figure, you know, so you can see the sculpted figure versus the soft goods, and I mean, yeah, this, this thing really blows it away. The proportions of the chair are more accurate to the movie. You can see how they're elongated at the top and on the sides, and the figure, you know, he sits perfectly in it. He can lean back, he can sit forward, he can threaten Luke, he could have Ewoks over for brunch, he could basically rule the galaxy. It sits a little bit lower than the previous one, which is how it's supposed to sit. It doesn't, you know, it's not totally hitting the floor, but it's not as raised as high, and uh, the inside is not as bright, which is also more screen accurate. The previous one had sort of a brighter purple. Not that I object to purple on my chairs. But again, the Palpatine that came with the Power of the Force 2 one was in permanent I'm sitting position, so unless he was backed up against a wall like that, he was pretty useless. You had to keep him in the chair, unless he was doing, like, you know, having a tantrum on the floor because, you know, he can't find his rattle or something. But, hey, he never really had to leave the chair. I mean, for, with so many standing Palpatines over the year, I was perfectly fine keeping him permanently in the chair, and he's been sitting in that chair for like 25 years on my shelf. And now I finally get to replace him. I, I, I can't believe it's taken this long to get what seems like a no-brainer deluxe version of one of the main villains from the movies. I mean, you know, after Vader and Tarkin and... Boba Fett and Dengar and Jabba. Okay, well, Palpatine is still a major threat. And, uh, you know, it's great. I'm so happy with this. The packaging absolutely blew my mind. Above expectations. A-plus Hasbro. Way to go. I can't wait to get the retail release, but this will be the one sitting on my desk. I now have a new guy in the chair. And that guy is Emperor Palpatine. I'm happy I got him. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you like it, Pass on this video. Oh, I'm not even going to try. Pass this video on. Subscribe. Ring the bell. Share it. Comments below. I'd love to know what you thought. Did you get one too? Did it arrive in as mint condition? What would you think of the packaging? I can't believe we were surprised by that. I wasn't expecting it. Hope you like this figure. Hope you like this video. See you next time.